and welcome to Virtual Coast Fest 2020. I am Matthew Andrews, a fourth grader at St. Francis Xavier Catholic School. Here in our studio today, I am joined by Donna and Ryan. Today we are exploring Aging in Growth Lab. Thank you, Matthew. I'm Donna McDowell, a biologist with the Coastal Resources Division, and I've been in this job for 18 years. Part of my job is aging the fish that come through the carcass program in the Aging Growth Lab. And I'm Ryan Harrell, a marine biologist with the Coastal Resources Division. I've been a biologist for nine years. I work with Donna on collecting samples for the Aging Growth Lab. We'd like to show you a short video about what we do every day for DNR. We'll be back to answer your questions via YouTube and Facebook afterwards. Welcome to our Fish Aging Laboratory. This is where the Coastal Resources Division of the Georgia Department of Natural Resources gathers data we've collected to make the best decisions possible in managing important fish species. Effective species management helps to ensure a healthy and abundant population of recreational and commercial fish and preserves our vital ecosystem. Coastal Resources Division biologists collect, process, evaluate, and preserve the aging structures of priority fish. Aging structures are part of the fish anatomy that can be evaluated to determine the age of fish. By knowing the age of fish, scientists can estimate growth rates of a species, maximum age, age to maturity, and trends for future generations. This information can assist in determining the health and sustainability of Georgia's fisheries. The process begins with the help of anglers from across Georgia's coast. The Marine Sport Fish Carcass Recovery Project encourages anglers to deposit filleted carcasses at collection points near fish cleaning stations, marinas, and docks. Anglers place the carcasses in chest freezers and Coastal Resources Division staff later transport them to the division's aging lab in Brunswick. Anglers have donated more than 65,000 carcasses since the project began in 1997. After each fish is identified, measured, and its sex is determined, biologists will remove a small bone called an otolith the otolith is used to determine the age of the fish. These small bones aid fish in balance and hearing and function in a manner similar as the inner ear of humans. Otoliths are sometimes referred to as ear stones or ear bones. They are comprised of calcium carbonate and located in the fish's head behind the eye just below the brain. Every year, additional calcium carbonate material builds up within the otolith. This process results in annual bands called annuli. Annuli are comparable to the growth rings found in trees. The otoliths among species vary in shapes and sizes. Some otoliths are large and chunky like those found in red drum and black drum. Others are thin and fragile like the ones found in southern flounder and sheep's head. A seasoned marine biologist may even be able to determine the species of a fish based solely on the otolith. Coastal Resources Division biologists remove the otolith by making an incision in the fish's head. Once the otoliths are removed, they're cleaned and dried. Next, a thin section is cut from the otolith using a low-speed saw with two diamond blades. A thin section is made through the core, yielding a clear view of annuli formed within the otolith. The sections are examined under a microscope and the age observations noted. Some of the fish aged in this manner include spotted sea trout, red drum, southern kingfish, also called whiting, Atlantic croaker, triple tail, sheep's head, and southern flounder. The data collected from these specimens are used in age-based population models, estimates of species mortality rates, and longevity. This information is used in stock assessments that provide statistics and information needed to manage fisheries. It's all part of the Coastal Resources Division's mission to protect and preserve Georgia's coast for the benefit of present and future generations. Welcome back to Coast Fest Studio. Donna and Ryan are ready to take any questions you may have about their program. To ask questions, use the chat feature on YouTube Live or comment on our live Facebook feed. To use the YouTube Live chat, you'll need to sign in as a user and set up your YouTube channel. You can find directions at www.coastalgadnr.org slash Coast Fest. While we wait on questions to come in, I'm going to go ahead and start with a few of my own. Of the fish received by DNR, which, is, which has the largest ocel? 
The largest otoliths that come through the carcass program are typically the black drum. They're a very large um, otolith. It's almost about the size of a large grape. Um, takes quite a bit of time cutting through it, but they're usually around 40 to 50 years old once we age these. And, and one of the things to remember too is um, red drum, there's a slot limit on a red drum. So you can't keep fish that are greater than 23 inches. Red drum also have large otoliths um, like black drum, but because of that uh, regulations. regulations, you know, we don't see those uh, large otoliths. Of the fish that C of CRD manages, which one lives the longest? The longest living one that we get through the carcass program is the black drum, again, um, up to 50 years old it can be, so. All right, so we've got a question um, from Leslie Jones. How do they catch the fish? Okay, um, so the fish that we get through our carcass program are actually caught by our anglers. Um, what we do is we have uh, chest freezers up and down the coast and when anglers come back to the dock they'll actually clean their fish and they'll um, take the fillets with them but what they'll do is they'll leave us the heads and tails intact. So these are all from hooking lines. Um, they'll put the fish in the freezer and then uh, we actually collect those bags and bring them back to us. Alright, so we got another question from Jamie Flantos. Um, what is your favorite part of your job? Well, I'd have to say the favorite part of my job is being out there on the boat and just kind of enjoying the sunrise and catching fish and working with my crew that get very excited for all the, the fish that we pick up. Um, and then just seeing how old fish are is always fun. We get a lot of one-year-olds, two-year-olds, but it's nice when you get to see a a 10 year old fish, so that's, that's fun. And the same goes with me. I enjoy being on the boats. Um, I also enjoy uh, coordinating with our anglers and our marinas uh, to collect these fish. It's, it's, very, uh, it's very rewarding to me that I get to go out and just talk about fishing with anglers. All right, so we have another question. How do the fish feel in your hands? Um, well, if it's a filleted fish, it feels kind of bony and icky, but um, we work through it. <laughs> and we, um, then we just cut the fish heads open and we take the otoliths out, put them in a nice little envelope, and we bring them up to the lab to be sectioned later on for aging. Another question from Leslie Jones is, do the fish sleep? No, the fish actually do not sleep. So they're, they're uh, active at all times of the day. And Jonathan Watkins asked, how do you get into your job? Uh, for me, I know it was a childhood thing that I wanted to do. I was in, wanted to be a marine biologist since like the seventh grade. Um, my dad's family were shrimpers. My mom's family owned the fish market. So it kind of made sense to me to get into marine science. And then I went straight to um, college, to Savannah State University, to receive my bachelor's in marine science. And fortunately for me, before I graduated, I actually got a part-time job doing a creel survey project here. And then that led into a full-time job, and I am still here, so I love it. Yeah, same with me. Um, I actually uh, was obsessed with fishing growing up and ended up going to the University of Georgia and did a fisheries and aquaculture program there. Um, I actually was more interested in freshwater fishing until I started visiting the Georgia coast and fell in love with the area and I ended up working for UGA doing um, some sturgeon work on the river there and was working with gill nets and it just so happens that a gill netting job opened up with the Georgia DNR and you know 10 years later here I am. So another question is what is the oldest fish you have ever found? In our lab the oldest fish that I've aged is a 38 year old black drum. So that's pretty cool if, you, if they could tell stories. There'd be a lot of stories to tell of all the times they got released. Matthew, why don't you ask me a question? Is there any way to tell the age of a fish? Is there any other way to tell the age of a fish? 
Yes, um, otoliths is definitely the, the main way to tell the age of a fish, but unfortunately the fish typically is dead. So if you want the fish to be alive, you'll take samples of their, their rays or their scales to age them. What species of fish do you get most from the public? Uh, mostly we get uh, spotted sea trout, um, and that's for a couple of reasons. Here's a spotted sea trout right here. Um, that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is they're, they're very abundant on the Georgia coast. Um, we also have a very liberal bag limit for spotted sea trout. Uh, each angler can keep up to 15 fish, and also they're, they're fairly easy to catch. Alright, so we have another question from Leslie Jones. What do fish eat? So different fish eat different things. Um, for the most part, I would say almost any fish that we work with, all these fish eat shrimp at one point or another. Um, but some fish are more specialized than others. Uh, sheep's head, for instance, um, usually eats uh, different sorts of invertebrates like crabs and that sort of thing. Crabs and snails, um, they actually have plates that are used for crushing that. Um, a lot of these fish eat different things such as, uh, such as finger mullet or mud minnows. Um, they eat a variety of things. Sand dollars sometimes. Too. Sand dollars. You, you, we found some, you know, one of the things that with this program though is uh, we do get to look inside the fish's stomachs and it's amazing some of the stuff we'll actually see. Do fish hear? Yes, the otolith is part of what they use to hear as well as their balance. It's very important for those fish. All right, so I got another question from Jamie Flantos. What's the largest fish you have ever caught? Um, for me, it would be on the long line project. It was, I think it was a nine foot um, great hammerhead shark is what we called on long line. I run a netting survey and uh, we've caught some six and seven foot lemon sharks. Um, those will probably be the biggest fish we've caught. Um, now personally fishing, I've, I've caught some large sharks and also uh, large adult red drum. What do anglers get from donating carcasses to the program? So we give a variety of rewards uh, to reward our anglers for helping us out. Um, we, anglers can earn shirts, they can earn uh, little golf fishing towels, uh, also hats such as the one I'm wearing right now. Um, also sometimes we'll do a drawing um, at the end of the year um, and, and find some sort of big prize to give away to an angler. I think uh, upcoming we're going to do a drawing for, um, we have some uh, bait uh, coolers yeah. that we're going to give away. Because sometimes anglers only donate once, but there are a lot of times where anglers have donated for years upon years for this program because they feel like it's important to them as much as it is to us. How is the data collected used to help manage Georgia's marine fisheries? So the data that we collect um, is used to create uh, age length keys. Um, that's probably the main way we use it. So what we could do is we could take a, a you know, the fish that are already being killed, we could take that and then provide a, a key to kind of determine that fish that are still alive, how old that fish is based off of what we've already seen. Um, also, we use this data in a variety of stock assessments. So when we go to uh, meetings for the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, for instance, uh, we'll bring Georgia's data and we'll help provide data to help uh, do age-based models and that thing, sort of thing. All right, so we have another question from Leslie Jones. A student asks, how do you catch a large amount of fish at one time? Well, it definitely wouldn't be on my long line because I only have <laughs> 60 hooks. So, <laughs> and they don't always bite on the hooks. I guess that would be mostly your netting would be, you'd catch more. Yeah, we'll, we'll catch a large amount with that. Um, what we do though is, you know, we use this for scientific purposes. So um, if you were actually going to catch a lot of fish uh, in a recreational manner, uh, using lots of rods at one time, or, um, you know, maybe seining. And nothing's guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have another question from Jamie Flantos. What 
Jonathan Watkins asks, do you see anything weird in the fish stomachs? I would say we don't see, uh, you know, anything foreign, for instance, um, but we do see a lot of, uh, it's amazing what some of these fish will eat. Um, a lot of times we'll work up a 14-inch uh, spotted sea trout, and that fish will have a 10-inch mullet in its stomach. Mm -hmm. um, it's just amazing what they'll eat. All right, so Leslie Jones uh, asks, can the fish get sick like we us do, do or like we do with the coronavirus? Um, not that I'm aware. <laughs> no. <laughs> no studies have been done. Another question from Leslie Jones is, how long can a fish grow? That would really depend on the species of the fish. Um, all fish kind of have their own maximum size. Um, black drum can get up to three to four feet max, where your trout would be 24 inches max. It just it really does depend on the species of fish. And that's all the time we have for this session of Virtual Coast Fest. We hope you've enjoyed learning about the Coastal Resources Division's mission